Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Modded Career with me, Oofle Spoofle. In this episode, we send a probe to the gas giant Jewel, we build an advanced interplanetary space station and three Kerbals set off on the first ever crewed mission to Duna. Hope you guys enjoy. In the last episode, we sent a probe to Moho, meaning that we've sent probes to all four of the inner planets in the Kerbal system. However, we're not gonna stop there. Beyond the orbit of Duna, there are four gas giants and one really distant dwarf planet. So, what better way to kick off exploration of the outer solar system than by visiting the largest planet, Jewel. Now, Jewel is pretty far out from the sun, so it's gonna take a lot of Delta V to get there. So our trusty rocket Enceladus is gonna need a little help to get our payload there. And of course, there is no better way than the Kerbal way, more boosters. Two kickback solid rocket boosters should be more than enough to give Enceladus that extra kick. Once we're nearly in space and air resistance isn't a problem, we can deploy our fairing to reveal the payload that I built on stream. As you can see, there are actually three separate payloads, all sharing a ride to Jewel. On the top of the stack, we have our Jewel Orbiter, which will orbit Jewel and fly past its moons, collecting scientific data from space. The other two spacecraft are atmospheric entry devices. One of them will be dropped into Jewel itself, where it will collect data on its thick atmosphere, and the other will land on the innermost moon of Jewel, Lathe, which also has a thick atmosphere similar to Kerbin's. Alright, so as you can see, we're now in low Kerbin orbit with 3 kilometers per second of Delta V remaining, which should be more than enough to get to Jewel. So let's do our injection burn. While we could save some Delta V by doing gravity assists from Eve and Kerbin, it does take a lot longer to get to Jewel that way, and let's be real, it's hardly worth the extra effort. Anyway, with our trans-Jewel injection complete, we might as well start planning our first maneuvers within the Jewel system. The plan is to use a gravity assist from Lathe to capture a Jewel, then use another gravity assist from Lathe to place us into a highly elliptical orbit of Jewel, where we can easily get encounters with other moons. Anyway, I hope the Kerbals at Mission Control have something to keep them occupied, because it's going to take a long time to get to Jewel. Now, if you were paying close attention earlier, you may have noticed that we have a transfer window to Duna coming up in a few days. So far, the only thing I've sent to Duna was a scientific satellite and a small lander. This time we've got much more advanced technology, so I think it's about time to send our first Kerbals to another planet. Our first interplanetary mission is going to be a crewed orbit of Duna and its moon Ike. There won't be any landings in this mission, but there are still some huge rewards to be gained. Now to get to Duna with Kerbals on board, we're gonna need a space station that can provide good habitation, radiation shielding and life support for the full three years they'll be in space for. So this space station is going to be called Europa. Right now you're watching the core module being launched on an Enceladus R2 rocket, which is just an Enceladus with two SRBs attached like before. This module has room for seven Kerbals and includes a science lab and a cupola. We also have life support, communications, power generation, and a bunch of extra docking ports, so this station should be expandable. So now we have somewhere for our Kerbonauts to live on their way to and from Duna, but we also need a way to actually get them to Duna. Our next module, the propulsion module, will sort all of that out for us. Once we've seen the booster separation, because come on, doesn't that just look amazing, we can deploy our fairing to reveal the module in all of its glory. To get large payloads to other planets, standard chemical rocket engines aren't really going to cut it. Instead, we need something a little more efficient. I've gone with a cluster of four nuclear engines, which are more than twice as efficient as a typical liquid fuel and oxidizer engine. Anyway, with our rendezvous complete, we can go ahead and dock the propulsion module to the core module. And that is actually most of the space station complete. Well, at least for now, I might decide to expand it in the future. However, there is one big thing missing from the space station, and that's the crew. Bill, Bob and Maxton Kerman are going to be the passengers on the first crewed interplanetary mission. As you can see, we aren't using my fancy new reusable rocket to launch the crew, and that's because the crew isn't the only thing I'm launching here. You may have noticed the slightly lengthy fairing between the second stage and the crew module, and inside that fairing we've got a few experiments that our crew can run at Duna for the extra science rewards. Now that we've rendezvoused with the space station, we can jettison the fairing to reveal our new modules. Now, docking these modules to the space station is going to be interesting. We're going to have to separate the modules into three separate spacecraft, then dock them individually. Okay, I promise we're almost ready to go to Duna. There's just one more thing. 
So that the propulsion module could be light enough to launch on an Enceladus rocket, I didn't include any fuel. So we're going to have to launch the fuel separately. Now I get that big fuel tanks aren't particularly exciting, so I'll make this quick. In total, I had to launch two rockets to fully fuel the station, and while it was very tedious to launch, rendezvous, dock, and re-enter each one, I have the power of video editing on my side. Oh, and by the way, this tanker could actually kinda glide. Kinda. I mean, we have a bit of fuel left, so why not try to land this? What could possibly go wrong? Oh yeah, that. Anyway, with Europa fully fueled up, it's time to start up our four nuclear engines and begin the first crewed interplanetary mission of the series. The transunit injection burn ended up being longer than usual since the thrust of the nuclear engines are pretty low. You might also notice that the crew module is no longer docked to the space station, and that's because I've left it in low carbon orbit. Once the mission is finished and Europa arrives back at Kerbin, we're going to rendezvous the space station with the crew module, then return our crew to Kerbin using the crew module. Anyway, we've finished the escape burn from Kerbin, and with a small midway correction burn, we'll reach Juna in about half a year. While the Kerbin to Juna transfer window is still open, we might as well send some more stuff over to Juna. One issue with the current mission to Juna is that our crew will have frequent communication blackouts as Juna blocks the line of sight back to Kerbin. So to fix this, we're going to send a relay network over to Juna on this Enceladus rocket. And by the way, how have I not thought of doing this onboard camera view already? Anyway, the flight profile of this launch is pretty standard, and once we reach the upper parts of the atmosphere, we can deploy our fairing to reveal our six relay satellites. The plan for this relay network is to have three satellites orbiting Duna and three orbiting Ike, because yes, I do plan to send our crew to Ike. But spoilers aside, we can go ahead and fire up the totally 100% reliable Merlin vacuum engine and do our Kerbin escape burn. This shouldn't take quite as long as Europa's burn since we actually have a thrust rate ratio above 0.3. Once again, we're going to have to perform a quick correction burn to match our inclination with Duna's. Just a quick firing of the totally 100% reliable Merlin vacuum engine and oh. Yeah, no relay network for us, I guess. Well, that mission didn't end well. I guess we just have to hope that Europa doesn't meet the same fate. Well, as you can see, we were able to complete our correction burn here without any engine failures, although I should point out that we have an engineer that can fix some problems, and since we have four engines, it shouldn't matter too much if just one fails. Anyway, after a reasonable wait, our crew have arrived at Duna. Now, I wanted a nice cinematic shot as the station approached Duna, but I realised that my periapsis was well inside Duna's atmosphere. Okay, I'll admit that I might have panicked a little bit here, but I do have better things to be doing than burning up in Duna's atmosphere. Now that we have a periapsis of about 55 kilometers, we can do our actual orbital insertion to place us in an elliptical orbit of Duna. The reason we want to be in an elliptical orbit of Duna is so that we can collect science data from space high above Duna before moving to a low orbit. Speaking of experiments, we have a science lab which allows us to analyse the samples we get from other experiments to get five times the science rewards. And we also have a crude experiment called Flight. It takes 14 days to complete and uses up a lot of electricity, but the science you get from it makes it well worth it. Once we've collected all the scientific data from Space High, we can perform a quick burn to place us in a low orbit about Duna. Again, this is so that we can farm all of the science data from Space Low above Duna. Alright, I think we can all agree that we've had enough of Duna, so let's fire up our engines and go to Ike. Ike happens to orbit Duna at a conveniently close distance, so it doesn't take much delta V to get there. Once again, we're going to start off by getting into an elliptical orbit of Ike to get science data from space high, then doing a burn at periapsis to get into a low orbit. This actually happens to be the first time I've encountered Ike at all in this series, so I ended up getting some bonus funds from the milestones. Anyway, our crew have gathered all of the scientific data, and all that's left is to wait for the next transfer window back to Kerbin, and hope they don't die of radiation poisoning in the meantime. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Or don't, it's your choice. Just kidding, you have no say here. You can find a download for the mod pack used in the series in my Discord server, which is linked in the description. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.